it's actually also my my great honor to introduce Professor uh, Kim. She's uh, an associate professor in uh, Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Curie Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, or I they call it KIST. Professor uh, Kim, inshallah, today we, she will talk about the enhancing visibility of reliable underwater visual slam. Uh, so, Professor Kim, uh, the floor is you. Okay. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks for introducing me. And it's actually a great pleasure for me to have this kind of presentation. I um, was invited to COUST last year, March. And right before I leave Korea, the pandemic started and like this COVID thing happened. So it's very unfortunate for me because I could have been there physically uh, visit COUST. And where I am at KAIST is very similar pronunciation as yours, so yeah. Anyway, I'll, today I'll talk about the enhancing visibility, about how we can improve the visibility of an image taken on the water. So before starting, I wanna briefly introduce my background. I have a background in mechanical engineering, but during my PhD program, I worked on underwater robots. Um, this is me <laughs> in the, where I did my PhD is University of Michigan and Michigan is at actually right in the middle of the US and there's no sea nearby. Uh, this is me at the lake, one of the lake uh, nearby the Michigan. So I have been working on this kind of torpedo shape AUV or hovering AUV. And this is um, a long project that I involved, uh, participated. So it was six years uh, that I participated in this project. The basic idea of this project was to inspect the in-water portion of the ship hull uh, using cameras. And my job was to make the visual slam works for underwater. And then I joined KAIST 2014, and I joined to the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. So ever since I joined, I was thinking about maybe I can do a lot of work on the infrastructure because a lot of infrastructures like dams or bridges, they, a portion of the infrastructures are in water. Um, I'm, I'm actually doing half and half. Half of my work is at underwater still and half of my work is at the um, like urban or uh, like surveying or construction site monitoring, that kind of thing. But anyway, the topic that I wanna talk is actually two portion. One is about the image enhancement. So how can we make things better? Later at this talk, I'll talk about this one again, but this is the same spot, but this, the left one was in the, taken in the morning and like three hours later, this is what I get. So it's very frustrating. The visibility changes so radically and so suddenly and our group has been working on image enhancement for about four to five years. And I would think the, pro the math solution might be like three cases. Either we can use model or we can rely on image processing or we can apply the deep learning, the new technology. So I'll talk about that briefly. Another thing that um, the, all of this is we we have already taken the image. So this is done and we are trying to improve this one afterward. But the another thing is if, what if we can make the camera work better, like more proactively before taking an image, can we control the exposure time or gain more adaptively than the auto exposure control or manual control that we use built in camera? So the second half of the first topic is uh, about camera control uh, to make the camera just better. In many cases um, during the um, underwater operation, if the vehicle goes to up near the surface, you will get a lot of light. But suddenly you want to go down deep in the water if the water turbidity is not that great. What you're gonna face is very dark uh, on the water environment and you have to rely on your artificial light source. So there's a kind of dramatic change. That's what I felt during my uh, like six years of the hall inspection project. So those are the first half of the project. And the second one is uh, 
to use the sonar together with camera. So this is a, actually very recent work. We have this work accepted for this ICRA uh, on May. So it's very new work of our group. Um, our idea is if one vehicle is with sonar and the other one is with camera, how can we make two vehicles do the visual slam together when both when two vehicles have different equipment. So those are kind of overview of the today's topic. And I'll start the first one. Um, so this is this was the case that I was mentioning. So it was a demo day and <clears throat> we all went there early in the morning and in the morning we did a rehearsal. Uh, we put the vehicle in the water and water was very clear. And we made a lot of registration. This, the green links indicate the successful registration between two images. And we were happy and we went for lunch and we came back after three hours. And this is what we see. Like suddenly some, something happened and what, water just, just became so bad. And we run the same, exactly the same algorithm, but we couldn't make any images. This is from the similar spot. This white one is right here. We couldn't make any registration and we couldn't find enough features and we couldn't find uh, enough measurement. And yeah, unfortunately the, the demo demonstration wasn't that successful as you see. So this kind of motivated me a lot. How can we make, how can we use the visual information even in the turbid environment? So this has the same, this is the same spot, but the visibility has just been changes so dramatically. Um, so we thought about three possible solutions. So we actually did one by one. The first was more straightforward. So we know how the vehicle looks like because we built it and we know where the light source and we know where we put the cameras, which means we can know about the environment pretty well. This is would be very simplified model. So if this eye is the image that we obtain and this image, obtained image is uh, weighted some between J, this is a clean image and ambient light. So what this one indicates is if the water is very turbid, but if the object is right in front of you, then this transmission T is a function of the distance. So if some object is very near to you, this will be one and this will be zero. So you will see very clean image directly. If this is really far away, then what happens is that you ha will have more ambient line came into the play and you will get more blurred and um, more turbid image. So in other words, if we can solve a ambient light and if we can solve the transmission map perfectly, we can just plug in and we can solve for J directly and we will get the uh, nice clean image. So, okay, it's a quite straightforward mathematical problem we thought and we tried to uh, calculate transmission map and ambient light, but uh, that wasn't that easy in the end. But what we did is we know this is the original image that we obtained and we know where we put the light. So the LED light was our right side. So this would be the light. And we had a four acoustic beam from the DVL shooting our the forward so we can locally fit our plane so we know where the, the target object looks like. So we, this will give us a nice uh, transmission map. No, we know the ambient light estimations. So now we can back solve one by one to calculate the restored image. Let me play this one again. So from here, we calculate the light transmission map and dehazing and the deconvolution for the noise removal and this is restored. So if we plug in this enhanced image, now we can get a visual slam working better uh, than the turbid water. So that was nice. Um, but the problem of this solution is you need to know where you put the light you need to know what's in front of you somehow. Luckily, we had four beams touching the, the surface of the hull. 
But what if we don't know anything about, what if we don't have any prior information? It'll be very difficult. So as a next step, we um, look into the another solution, see if we can use image processing. So because we relied on image processing technique, uh, multi-band fusion, we didn't need any prior information. This is totally solely uh, based upon the image processing. So we make a lot of um, different multi-band and we fuse that to enhance the image. Yeah, it kind of worked nicely. Um, we apply this one to, this is a true ground truth and this is the hate image and see if we can um, make the segmentation nicely, even from the haze image. So we work on that image processing line of study for a while. Another thing that we focus on is in underwater, um, like uh, ACFR and Stefan Williams' work it has a lot of color image, but for my purpose, I wanted to ins inspect the ship hall. So we use a lot of grayscale. So another thing that we uh, we're focused on is to see if we can make this algorithm works both for color and grayscale image. So yeah, that's the um, uh, kind of the video is repeating. So that was image processing based approach. Nice thing about this approach is you don't need uh, model information. You only need the images, but still we were not very happy about this. So, so we wanted to do more advanced one. So as a next step, uh, we look into if the deep learning technology can be applied to it. So very basic um, step would be, like I said, if we know the ambient light and the transmission map, then we can recover the image. So very, we created very simple network and we made a simulation environment and where we can, we know the exact depth map because it's simulation. And because it's simulation, we can apply many different artificial lights. So we can turn on red, blue, green, whatever we want. So we uh, put a lot of different ambient light and we trained our network to estimate the ambient light, what is the air color or water color of the environment, and what will be the transmission map. So this was the network that we trained. Um, and if we apply to this sample image, for example, our network predicted, okay, this greenish one is the color of the ambient light, and this is the transmission map. So what we can do is next, we can plug this one into our equation and calculate this enhanced image J. So it was straightforward. Um, we were very happy about it. And uh, we applied to many different um, sample images. And this is comparison to the existing method. Um, this is ours. And another thing, as a side product, uh, byproduct, we could estimate what the water color or air color would be from this network. There was uh, another part results that the environmental engineers liked a lot. And anyway, this is the estimated water color of this image. This is estimated water color, color of this image. And this is like estimation. Um, so that was really nice. But still, we the problem of this work is supervised learning, which means you need to have the ground truth transmission map and the ambient light. We could do this one because we use simulation. Uh, because we use simulation, we can generate a ground truth label to train our network. But can, can we do this one in an unsupervised? Can we, do, can we train somehow our network without having any ground truth label? That was our next research question. And what we did is <clears throat> we, then we found again, um, GAN was very nice. GAN was um, generative adversary network and um, two networks are trying to cheat each other, right? So how we applied GAN is we made one as a hazer make image bad and the other one as a dehazer and 
we led them to train by others. Nice thing about this one is you don't need to have very precise labeling, but you can just collect a lot of online publicly available images and put one group as a hate image and one group as a clean image and you train your GAN. So that was very nice. And this is a deep learning based, so you don't really need any prior model and you don't need a ground truth label um, as we did for the CNN. So this one alleviate a lot. So our next step was we had a colleague from the CRISO, this is Korean Research Institute of Ship and Oceanary. They had a small robot and there is a C in between the robot is working in water. This left side is the original image and they gave us uh, this video clip and see if we can enhance this image. So this was a result from our DHA scan and as a result, you don't know anything about this robot at all. You don't know where the camera was attached. You don't know anything about your environment, but still you are able to enhance this image. So like overall, we kind of went through all three different methods, model-based and image processing based and deep learning based. And uh, our best, our favorite is the last one, the dehazing again, because we could do many things without having a very sophisticated ground truth label or model. But anyway, uh, those are kind of the first topic. Um, and the second topic is about the camera control. Um, this is not only for underwater. This, is very, this was very useful for ground terrestrial robotics. In many cases, you might have a situation like this. You are in the dark parking lot or garage and you are going outside and you are facing sun directly and suddenly the saturation occurs and you your tracking is lost that kind of happens a lot so this is not not only for underwater but for the ground vehicle too but the formulation of this work is actually very simple you we all know if the exposure time is very very small, you will get very dark image like this. If exposure time is too long, you will get a lot of exposure and uh, then you will have very bright image like this. As you increase the exposure time, you know the image changes from A to E. And in other words, this is exposure time. If we can somehow measure the information level we know the information level will increase and then decrease. So the formulation here is we want to find out what is our optimal exposure time that results in the, our best quality image. So two things we need to do. First, we need to find this optimum value. Second, we need to somehow measure the level of information for our image. But this, this is not only for human. The information that I'm mentioning is the information for robot navigation. So what we think we can think of is a robot navigation will be successful if there's many gradient, many edges, many feature points. So those are some of the things that we did. Um, another problem that we have is if this is exposure time and if this is our metric, our metric need to include image gradient and it does not, it doesn't, it shouldn't have a lot of saturation. So we have to consider entropy. So we can make nice uh, formulation for our information measure. If we change the exposure time, information will increase and then decrease. The problem of finding optimal solution for this is because we know the rough function shape, but we don't know exact function shape. And each one of this function evaluation correspond to actual frame grip, grip. So if you wanna apply a large exposure time, you take the on photo, you need to expose for a long time then take a image that is very expensive. This function evaluation itself is very expensive. 
And what we want is we want to have a minimal function, function evaluation and find a solution, which is good for that uh, is Bayesian optimization. How Bayesian optimization works is it estimates the function shape simultaneously with finding optimal solutions. So at the first uh, evaluation, the Bayesian optimization will ask you to, let's evaluate this one because this will uh, minimize the uncertainty about your function shape, but at the same time, it's very close to your optimal value. And then second, uh, third. So as this function shape is very simple, concave, so you will get the solution at most five steps. So which is good for us. So we only need to have a four to five evaluation and get the optimal value for the exposure time. Additionally, we don't need to take the actual image if we have one single image at the first instance as a seed image. Now we can uh, fit the camera response function and synthesize those images. So what I mean is very, this is very super fast uh, algorithm. So we apply that. Um, this is our department building at night. Um, how our department light system works is uh, it's induced by motion. If people walk in, if the light system detect motion, then it turn on the light. And as you see, our camera control is now, is very fast and adaptive to this kind of radical change between uh, dark and bright. Um, when we turn around that corner at this point, if we didn't apply any, if we use just naive exposure control or manual control, it breaks uh, at that moment. Whereas our algorithm can uh, make things work reliably when even when changing the light condition. This is a little larger version of this one. So you probably can get the, the, the idea of how we can estimate our um, and estimate the function shape and find the optimal solution. And this is how it works. And some snapshot of the frame when this image frame is suddenly getting bright or dark, it should be able to adjust. So our uh, plan is to apply that one to, uh, to more radical situation, not only the ground <clears throat> images, but also the, the underwater or underwater what you can what we use many times is low light camera. So we were thinking about applying this one to the low light camera and putting into more um, radical situation. Okay, so that was uh, the first part of this talk. And the second half of this talk is about a more recent work of our group. Um, so this is recently accepted for ICRA. Um, we wanna know what we can do for the case when the first vehicle is with the sonar and sonar is uh, has longer range and it can detect images like this. Um, so you can see farther and you, do, you can see regardless of the water condition, you can detect an object even the water is not clean enough, which is very nice thing about using sonar. But um, this is a small rectangular shape artificial target that we put on the, on the floor. But as you can see, you can read a letter E here, but still and it's not clean as the, an optical image. Um, and if the second vehicle, two vehicles are operating, the second vehicle, if the second vehicle has a camera, down looking camera, this will be an image obtained from the camera, the same target, but they look different. Um, the qu question that we had is, there would be a situation that two vehicles are operating, two vehicle has different heterogeneous uh, sensors. For example, here we have one vehicle equipped with sonar, the other vehicle equipped with camera. How can we make the uh, two vehicle navigate together. How can we solve the SLAM problem, the simultaneous localization and mapping problem together? 
I call this one as a multi session because it could be either the same vehicle doing the mission twice with different sensors, or it could be two vehicles equipped with different sensors. So first session or first vehicle is session A, second vehicle or the session B. And when we have this multi session, how can we make two things work? So there is a theoretical establishment about uh, formulating how we can convert the relative motion from the matching. But there's a big um, gap in between the theory and the real deployment because the question is how can we make the matches? How can we make the registration happen? By human, we know this corner correspond to here, this corner correspond to here, but any algorithm, this is totally from different sensor. This one is from the optical image and the other one is from sonar. Their projection model is different. Their sensor, how the sensor works as a physical background is different. So um, there was a big gap in that sense and our group was working on how we can make this one happen. So uh, the idea is let's make the sonar looks like an optical image by using a style transfer, uh, one of the deep learning algorithms. So we know um, the changing style of one arti artist to the other um, is very popular in uh, deep learning uh, researches. So we apply that to our work to make the sonar image looks like an, an optical image. Um, so Let's say this is one first session, this is second session, and we have two sensor matching. Without, instead of using this raw sonar image, let's convert this to style transferred optical like sonar image. So this is not the real image, but this is a kind of fake image. The style has been changed. And try to match between this style changed fake image with our optical image. Since this is fake image, um, limitation is this is not exactly the same pixel point, but we wanted to have a rough uh, registration between two vehicles. So that's the idea. And actually, this is future work. How can we make this one more, more exact? That's uh, another thing that in our future work. But anyway, once we make this matches successful, the next step is we can run our uh, theoretical mathematical solution to calculate the rel relative motion between this image to this. And that will make um, the registration between two sessions. So whenever we recognize or whenever we may match this sonar to camera registration, now we can align two different sessions together using the multi-session solution. So that's the kind of overview. And I want to go into one by one. So how we can change the style. So we want to know, we want to get style from an optical image, but the contents should come from the sonar image. That's, uh, we, that's how I mean the, so, the camera-like sonar image. And <clears throat> we have to go through, this would be kind of typical sonar noise. And by adding this, we can make this styled image. So this is, as you see, these contents are from the sonar, but this shape and the style is adopted from the style transform. So um, how there are two networks actually inside, and one is getting the object contents, and the other one is getting the the shape, uh, the style of an image. So if, if we train one network from the other one by one, then we can get the contents from our sonar image and style from an optical image. So, and this is resulting simple, uh, simple image. Once we obtain this, this is raw and this is raw sonar of the same spot. Now we can make the styled image. This is the contents are from the sonar, but the style is from <clears throat> an optical image and you can make this. Um, this is style transfer. So uh, the ca the caveat or the bad effect is there could be some artifacts happening. You try to 
uh, minimize this as much as possible, but there are some cases like this happening, having some artifacts. But the dominant factor, dominant portion of this contents could be adopted from the sonar. So these are simple views. And then the next is once we style transfer one image, now we need to make matches. And here, um, this is traditional feature-based extractor. This AKJ is one of the popular um, feature, feature description uh, widely used in the sonar images. And if we apply this AKJ and right at this left corner shows an optical image, we try to match between optical image to sonar. Uh, if we use AKJ, we could make nine to 17 matches. If we use a super glue, you could make 33, which is kind of nice, but when you try to match directly to raw sonar against your optical image, it wasn't that successful as you see here. Only we couldn't make any matches. Um, we applied the filter. Um, still, you couldn't get much improvement, but if we apply our style transferred sonar image, to the optical image, as you see, in many cases, we could make a lot of registration. Uh, we know the pixel itself is not very, very accurate. That's some of the things that we need to do, but still we were able to make a lot of registration enough for us, for us to run additional optimization to calculate the relative pose between this camera and the sonar images. So, uh, we use, in, uh, in total, we use navigation factor and a unary depth factor for each vehicle. But in the middle, there's, there is this optioacoustic factor that goes between, between sessions. This OA1 and OA2 indicates uh, that links between the sonar session <clears throat> and the camera session like this. So let me go to the results. So we first tried a simulation, a very simple oval trajectory shape and uh, generated um, if we can result in enough feature matching, our mathematical model is robust, making the screen registration. So this is kind of too straightforward. This is simulation. So um, we will get more um, important aspect. So there was, we run a rear tank test, putting those targets on the water. Um, and how we tested our algorithm is we put our sonar mission here and we run the camera mission um, somewhere in the arbitrary point. So when we didn't have any optioacoustic factors, this is lingering like this. But as you see, the green one, when it is coming back, it's making registration and it can align to the sonar mission by matching between camera and sonar. So after all four loop, we could make those registrations and, and that's how you can see our um, trajectory is much more aligned to the sonar. If we examine each one of this link in more detail, this is how we make the registration. So um, between the right one is style change it sonar image and left one is our optical image, optical image to styled sonar. As you see, we can make more registration and this is all um, samples from ABCD here. Well, we talked about the Im image enhancement and first part was we could make the image looks better by doing the post-processing. But we believe we can take the image at the acquisition time more proactively by applying our camera proactive control. The second talk is more recent work of ours and we were looking into changing the style of the sonar or changing the style of, the, of an optical image to match between optical image and acoustic images. Uh, because in many cases, one vehicle has sonar and the other one has camera only and we wanted to use both of the vehicle more simultaneously. So we were looking into that problem. There are tons of work for the second topic. Uh, as you saw, 
we wanted to make the pixel detected more accurately, and we wanted to wanted to apply this one to a three dimensional object and more natural objects. So we have a lot more actually for the future work for the second topic, and we are working on it. Um, for many groups and research funding sources um, supported our work, and this is our group, and we are working on underwater and um, urban. We have a small drone project and underwater uh, project too. Uh, thanks so much, and I'll be happy to answer questions before moving into the next. Okay, thank you, Professor Kim. Actually, this is a really, really interesting talk. Uh, I really like it. Uh, there is actually a couple of questions. Mostly talked about cameras. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the sensors, the camera that I, I'm using recently. Um, I think later at this talk, I talked about, I'm planning to use a low light camera. Uh, so I'm trying to broaden the camera choice, camera selection. But all of the results that I showed you is using uh, most of the typical machine vision cameras. Um, and what are the most promising sensor technology hardware wise? Are they coming down to technology paths? Um, <clears throat> camera is a lot of, um, it's very popular. Um, so on the water, I've been mostly using uh, camera sensors, so I, I don't know if I can answer this properly, because um, the sonar I have used Didson um, in the collaboration with uh, one of the research institute. Um, so I can really say I cannot really say much about the sonar sensor, but for the camera sensors, it's getting cheaper, and many different camera sensors are coming up. For urban and terrestrial, I'm working on event camera or thermal cameras too. Someday I'm really interested in putting event camera or thermal cameras at uh, the event camera in water and want to see how that works. Uh, um, so yeah, there are yeah tons of new sensors coming up, so, um, including like omnidirectional and the event, event camera. Yep. Thank you very much for your time.